Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth here. So I'm just doing this little quick video in regards to kind of celebrating that both of my blogs, Mind, Body, Soul, Food and the Lemon Tree is four years old in August. I think the actual kind of birth date is the 11th. I'm not, I don't really remember, but it's in August. Um, I created these blogs four years ago while living in Germany. And so, um, yeah, I lived in the Leibniz house, which was the former home of Gottfried Leibniz, who created the binary code. And so he has a lot of historical roots in Hanover, Germany. Um, and so that was a really great experience. And I think that through that time, I was developing a lot of myself um, spiritually, personally, um, healing from things, but also wanting to, to make... Uh, something that had my own voice. So I did a lot of freelancing for a lot of different blogs and brands and for companies in the fitness industry. And what I found was that um, a lot of these organizations, uh, you know, they're bounded through kind of a mainstream image. So they have to either mass edit papers or they have to use certain types of language that the, the higher ups want them to use because it makes it more buzzworthy and click worthy. And so I kind of went on a whim and I was like, you know what, I'm doing my own thing. And at that time of living in Germany, I also started to um, experiment with, uh, with different types of dairy-free recipes. I kind of found that love again because I worked at a vegan cafe in college. And so I really always found cooking to be something therapeutic. So at the time I was married, I was kind of like a housefrau. Um, you know, it was like the birth to this, this new beginning and chapter to develop the things that I love, which are things like cooking and integrating creativity with photography as well as, um, yeah, writing in general. So blogging, you know, throughout the four years, I've kind of shape-shifted a lot of what I've, you know, originally thought at first, comparing it to what I do now. So a lot with my travel blog, it was a lot of just like things to do and where to visit. And now that it's on, um, hooked up with an app called GPS My Travel, um, you know, I'm starting to find that as I've grown um, with understanding history more and believing in heritage and cultural preservation, that a lot of what I write is more of like things like how to explore the different historical roots and cultural things in the city rather than it just being kind of like adventurism, like how does zip line from A to B. Um, so I just got done kind of making um, a little kind of dairy-free vegan rice pudding, which is uh, a recipe that I'll be probably posting in the fall since it's near the end of summer. I got to, uh, I'm wearing this dress from the 60s, I think it's from the 60s, and so I'm going to be doing some photography with it shortly here um, with whatever flowers are kind of left in nature. So as I've grown myself, especially after divorce, um, I've noticed that a lot more of my writing is going more toward the spiritual uh, areas of life um, to, to kind of guide people, to, to heal themselves, to understand that change isn't necessarily scary. It's, it's needed in life, but you have to choose to want to change yourself and to heal um, your wounds and then bring different perspectives into spirituality. I really think a lot of my gifts, um, even as like a health coach and a trainer, is more of like a mediator. It's this middle road approach that I detach myself from my own biases and my own whatever like ideologies to help guide people to a better and healthier place. And so a lot of what I've noticed um, since divorce is that I kind of, and living in Germany, toward the end of Germany, I started to kind of fall in love with vintage things and antique stuff. And the clo the vintage clothing thing has been kind of a, a new area for me in the last year. It's interesting. I look at um, some outfits or just articles of clothing that I bought for Burning Man when I went in 2016. And I looked at the tags and I'm like, oh my God, these are like vintage dresses. I almost wore them on the playa and then I was like kind of attached to them. I was like, they're so pretty. I don't want to ruin them with, um, you know, the, the dust that's out there. So I ended up keeping them and I looked at the tags like a couple months ago. I'm like, oh my God, I bought vintage clothing. So something within me was starting to go and, and find um, the more vintage inspired clothing, which it's kind of like who I am, this duality. 
where it's like I am in, I do embrace things about the future and the modern world, but I do find that history in the past and being modest and things like that are very important, especially because fashion um, was very feminine. Um, and, and you're, you know, now you're seeing that things are either really promiscuous looking or it's a lot more masculine type clothing, um, for females. There's still a lot out there that's very feminine, but you know, you're seeing this reemerging of a lot of independent companies start to, uh, create clothing that is, uh, they're, they're like the designs from other eras from like the fifties or styles of dresses that you would see in the, the forties and stuff like that. So I guess where I'm going with this is, um, it's kind of like vintage and vegan. It's kind of funny to some degree. Um, cause it's like two ends of the spectrum that probably don't really match at all. But, um, I, I don't know. I found a love for these clothes because I do think that there's a lot of beauty and a lot of the hand work that has been done. And a lot of this is to, subconsciously reprogram the beautiful areas of the divine feminine. Nowadays, you find a lot of liberation in femininity, which is like taking off your clothes. You see it at feminist activist events. Um, you know, they're walking around with their shirts off. You know, it's like tits out and stuff like that. So I'm just like, all right, I'm done. You know, it's like I'm done with this shit. So, um... I'm not involved in any of those things, so it's like, all right, why can't we just re-embrace the, the beautiful parts of, of a woman through um, the historical, I guess, fashion to some degree? Um, because those have been very prominent, not only in our history and our culture, but it also has prom promoted a lot of the finer aspects of, you know, femininity and the divine feminine. So... I'm kind of on this new area, which is kind of a new thing for my blog. So I thank everybody for um, whoever supported me along the way. Even my ex, I thank you because he supported me. Although we're not together anymore, I'm still thankful um, for, for his encouragement at the time that when we were together to help me, uh, you know, launch this and not be afraid to do it. I'm kind of also thankful for all the failures that I've had, whether it's been through the blogging or just through my writing in general, um, because this has somehow led me to this point and area in time. And, um, you know, the, even my, I, I've noticed like my cooking has definitely improved a lot through the years through like experimentations and just understanding how to work with food and spices and ingredients more that things are easier to create now um, rather than they were when I first started. So anyways, thank you everybody for listening to this channel. I still kind of feel like I'm talking to the air, but I do appreciate um, everyone's support and just taking the time to listen. Um, if you do private message me, probably it's best through the blog. Um, you know, for certain people, if you live in the United States, I am definitely willing to give you a copy of my book, Finding Ohm. Um, I can't give away so many, too many copies of them for free, uh, just because it's, it's a budget thing. You know, I have to mail the stuff and pay for the books itself. So, um, you know, if you are inspired by a journey of change, you can definitely message me and I will see what I can do. I'm kind of going to limit myself to like 10 people. Um, I do believe in change. It's a journey kind of from going from being lost to found. And I really hope that it can help you along your path of change, regardless of if you're male or female and, and your age or whatever. Um, change is inevitable. So to some degree, uh, we can embrace it. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for listening and subscribing and reading my blogs. And some people private messaged me through the years saying thank you for writing this or saying this and things like that. So I do appreciate those things. You know, my uh, readership, or not my readership, but like, you know, my YouTube sphere is very small. So even if I can help one person out, I'm very, very thankful for that. All right, have a great rest of your day and see you later. Okay, bye.